everyone, welcome to my cat lesson. I really love cats, so I'm excited to do this for you today. I'm going to read you a cat poem. I'm going to talk about cat personalities and I'm going to tell you some stories about my old cat I used to have. Unfortunately, he's dead now, but his name is Mr. M he is was Mr. Milo. So I'll let you know something about Mr. Milo as we do the lesson. Let's begin with a poem. This poem is about cat behaviour and also about how a cat changes as it gets older. I'll read it to you now. Listen kitten, get this clear. This is my chair, I sit here. Okay kitty, we can share. When I'm not home, it's your chair. Listen cat, how about if I, if I use it when you're out. So what happens in this poem is that as the cat gets older, the cat's behavior changes. At first, it's a lovely sweet kitten and the cat's owner is in charge. The cat's owner is still the boss and the cat's owner can say, this is my chair. When the cat is a kitten, when it's still a baby, then later, the power has changed between the cat's owner and the cat. Now, they, they share the chair. They sit together. The owner sits with the cat. And when the owner goes out, then the cat can sit in the chair by itself. This is when the cat has become a kitty. And then later, when the cat has become an adult, the power has completely changed and now the cat's owner can't sit in his own chair. He has to ask his cat, is, is it okay if I sit in that chair that you like so much when the cat has grown up? So I really liked that poem about cats because I think that's one of the main things about their personalities. Unlike a dog, that respects you as its master and will always look up to you. That's not guaranteed with a cat. And many cats, as they get older, become very powerful and more powerful even than their owners. So let's look at some cat words now. We've got pussy or pussycat. The word pussy can be a rude word. If we want to say we can still use it when we're talking about cats, but we have to say it in a sweet way. Pussy. And we can say, here, pussy, 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 to a cat. It, it does sound a little bit funny, but you could still say it as a, a kind of joke or to be sweet. Another cat word is moggy. A moggy is a cat that it's not a fancy cat. It's maybe not a very attractive cat. It's a mix of all the different street cats around and not a, not a beautiful champion cat, but one that you can still love very much. Next, we have a tom or a tom cat. This is a male cat. And we have also pedigree cat. Pedigree is a cat that has been bred to look a certain way, to look beautiful. My cat Mr. Milo was a pedigree cat. He was a Persian cat. He was very, very beautiful, but he wasn't very intelligent as a cat. And perhaps it's true that many moggies are more intelligent than, at least more intelligent than Persian cats because they haven't been so inbred to look beautiful. Okay, now let's look at cat behavior. What does a cat do in its general daily life. First of all, a cat loves to nap. You will often find a cat napping. For example, the cat may nap on a chair, it may nap on your bed. Cats might also do some hunting during the day. So watch out if there's any wild birds in your garden or any mice that might be in your garden or in your house because your cat will try to hunts that. Mr. Milo was not very good at hunting. No, 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 it was quite funny. 
He lived for 17 years. He never caught a bird. He only managed to catch a mouse that was already dying. So it couldn't really, it couldn't really run fast. And Mr. Milo was so proud that he, he put his paw on this already half dead mouse. But that Mr. Milo wasn't, he wasn't, um, he wasn't much of an aggressive cat. He was just, you know, he was good at looking beautiful and that was all he did really. <laughs> Cats also like to groom. Grooming is when they lick their, lick their fur to stay clean. Cats also like to purr. That's how Mr. Milo would purr. It was often quite annoying because he always wanted to do it right there next to your neck. So you would get the feeling of the claws coming out and also wet cat breath on your neck and in your ear and you would try to push him away but he always came back to do more so it was it was nice but also annoying about him cats meow mr milo would meow something like this he was a whiner he didn't he didn't meow very loud but he wouldn't stop meowing if he wanted food, you'd have to give it to him. Next, we've got scratching. I already mentioned when Mr. Milo purred, he would scratch you on your neck, but cats also scratch on their scratching posts or on furniture. They have to do that to keep their claws short. Cats, will also swish their tails. I'm not sure what that means. I think they can swish their tails in different moods. In some cats, sometimes I think it means they're a bit angry if they swish their tail. And it could also mean that they want to hunt something. Let me know in the comments if you know why a cat swishes its tail. Next, let's look at cat adjectives. How can we describe the personality of cats in general? First, we've, we've got independent. Cats are different to dogs, of course, because they go outside on their own. They go and have adventures outside. Some, some cats go out for a long time. Some cats go very far, they like to travel. And they're independent because they don't, go out in a group with other cats. If you ever see dogs, or street dogs, they are happy to be in a pack together. And they like to, not all the time, but they often like to walk the streets together with the other dogs. Whereas cats, they'll generally walk around alone, although they might like to nap or sit near other cats sometimes. But I don't think they plan it like they're all going to go out together at the same time. Next, cats are intelligent. People argue about this one because they say dogs are intelligent because you can teach them tricks. You can teach them to give you their paw and you can teach them to bark. So people say cats aren't intelligent like dogs because they don't do tricks. But the thing is, Cats wouldn't be interested in doing tricks for you. They, they don't want to be controlled by you in that way, I suppose. So I think cats are intelligent, but in the way that it's how they look at you sometimes. They look at you like they understand your deep psychology or your flaws. So they have a certain kind of intelligence that's different to dogs. Maybe dogs can do stuff if you teach them, but cats already know stuff. Now also cats are mysterious. If you think about it, when cats go outside, you don't always know where they go. Now Mr. Milo, when he was about two years old, 
One day he just left and he didn't come back. He went traveling and we put up some posters around the local area to try and get Mr. Milo back, obviously because he's our cat and we loved him very much. So we wanted to get him back. And uh, it was actually a few weeks later, but somebody called, called up and said, I think that I've spotted your cat and your cat's in my neighbor's garden. And this woman, the neighbor was a mad cat lady and she would attract all the cats in the neighborhood to her garden. And then the cats would choose to go and live there at her house instead. So Mr. Milo left us to go to the mad cat lady. We went to the house to get Mr. Milo back. And he, although he looked the same, he had the long fur, same eye color. When we got him back, it was like his whole personality had changed in the time that he was living in this other house. And it, it took a few weeks for him to get back to the old Mr. Milo. But that's an example of how mysterious they can be. You know, we'll, we, we will never know if he wanted to leave us or he just walked too far and got lost. He'll keep it a secret forever. And I think many cats do that. They don't want you to know everything about them. Cats are also curious. We have a phrase, curiosity killed the cat. I had another cat when I was younger, but unfortunately that cat died when it was very young, less than a year old. And curiosity literally killed that cat. That cat was eating a stick. I don't know why it decided to eat a stick. It must have thought, what's this? I want to put it in my mouth. And then it choked on the on the stick. It was very sad because nobody found it when it was struggling. But if if the cat wasn't so curious and interested to find out things, oh what's the stick? maybe he would have lived for much longer. Next, cats are choosy. Choosy means they, if there's something choosy in the sense that you like this, but you don't like that. There's some people you like, some people you don't like. And cats are very much like that. If a cat if you think, if you try to call a cat, often it doesn't come to you and cats will avoid some people that come to your house, but other people they'll really like and they'll come up and want to jump on their lap. So in that sense, in that sense, a cat is choosy. Next, cats are playful. Mr. Milo wasn't really that playful. If the most excited he would get is to maybe do this a few times. But some cats like to jump, play with string, go crazy, roll on the floor, and they do exciting things when they're kittens. Cats are also affectionate. Some cats, some cats are not. They like to sit in your lap. They like to purr for you. They like to um, come and walk by your legs. So in that way, they're affectionate. Cats are disloyal. I'm not sure if they are disloyal because I don't think they are doing it on purpose to leave you. For example, when Mr. Milo went away and left us, maybe he was just having an adventure. It wasn't because he said, I don't like this food that you're giving me anymore. I'm going away to the mad cat lady. And if we think about dogs here, it can help us understand because a dog, if some people unfortunately beat their dogs or hit them and they shout at them really badly, but the dog will always come and 
be be friends again with its master. You can treat a dog very badly and they will always come back and love you. Whereas cats, they will make a decision about where they live. If it's good for them, they will stay. But if it's not good for them, they might leave and they'll go to somebody else who feeds it or somebody else who takes it in the house. So in that in that way, they they are disloyal because they won't stay forever if you treat them badly. But I think disloyal is a strong is a too strong word. It makes it seem like the cat is just waiting to leave you at any time. And I don't think that's quite true about it. They just, they're able to move on. Whereas for dogs, it's harder for them to do that. If you think about cats, if somebody dies or they can't keep their cat anymore because they're moving house or moving to a different country, the cat can go to another house and adapt very, very quickly. Dogs can do that, but it takes them longer to be comfortable in a new home. Next, we have lazy. What do you think? Do you think cats are lazy? Obviously, they sleep a lot. And I suppose they're not very busy. They don't have a lot to do. So unless they do lots of hunting, it can seem like cats are lazy. And on those days where you feel a little bit tired and you go and have a sleep, usually in the afternoon, that's when we take a cat nap. When we feel lazy like the cat, we go and have a cat nap. And the last adjective to describe a cat is timid. Timid means the opposite of brave. When you're timid, if you hear a noise, a bang, you run away. Some cats are very timid. Some cats, if they meet a new person, they'll stay on the other side of the room or they'll always run away from them. Mr. Milo wasn't very timid. He was just more calm. He was a calm kind of cat. I think he was maybe not that intelligent that he, he wasn't scared by so many things because he didn't understand what they were. So there we are. Thank you for watching my cat lesson. I have a quiz for you to do now on everything we've learned today. Thank you for watching. Meow. I forgot something, a story I wanted to tell. I forgot a story that I wanted to tell you. Mr. Milo, I loved him so much. He was my cat. When I got that cat, I was 11 years old. And in my family, nobody had had a cat before. So we didn't, all right, it's not the hardest thing in the world to take care of a cat, but we didn't really know. And my mum, she bought me a book about caring for your Persian cat. And Persian cats, they have long hair. Don't know where she got this book from, but it said that to take good care of your Persian cat, you have to give it a bath one time a week. And because I loved him so much, that's what I decided needed to happen to Mr. Milo every week. Now this might explain why he wasn't a very intelligent cat. It may have been some kind of trauma that I was responsible for. So what would happen, Mr. Milo's bath time, he would get in the water and he would go, he would reduce size and become this skinny little bone. All his fluff is gone. And he's like shaking in, in the bath like that. Tries to jump out. Every time he tries to jump out, no. And I'm 11 or 11 or just 12. And I love him so much. He must have this bath and have shampoo and everything. But it doesn't end there. The next step is then to go onto my windowsill in my bedroom and be blow dried with a hairdryer, really loud and very, very close to his skin, potentially burning him. Okay, I know this was wrong now, but when I was 11, I thought that was love for my cat. 
So he would be on the windowsill and he would try and run to one side so he could jump off and the hairdryer would follow him. So then he would try to run to the other side to jump off and I'd follow him with the hairdryer. And so this would happen every single week until somebody told me, you're not supposed to do that to cats. I don't think he likes it. And then I, I stopped torturing him and making him look beautiful. So there's my story. Thanks for watching.